Hey everyone, it's Fox from ModelMakingGuru.com here. I have a new toy. Mm. New airbrush. Yes. There's nothing wrong with my other airbrush. It's a revolution, Iwata Revolution. Uh, as I amusingly said the other day in a, a different video, I've been using it for eight or nine months and completely forgotten that I broke my other Neo and had to replace it and bought a Revolution, even though it says Revolution down the side. I just, I just, my brain sometimes the way it works, I don't know how it works. Anyway, I uh, got another one because I'm going to be doing some spray priming on the Z, uh, the uh, uh, brain words. Shall I just give up? Shall I just stop? Because I'm going to be doing spray priming with the airbrush on my Zaku, I figured I'd better get another airbrush to do the painting with. Because that primer, yeah, it gunks up your airbrush. The Revolution is a 0.5mm needle, which should be fine for priming. This is a 035 It is the Neo Free Water, but it's the TRN1. It has the trigger mechanism. Let's get this off so you can see it. So, if you've, had, if you've got a Neo, this is exactly the same. It just has this rather functacular trigger assemblage here uh, for the triggering. Now, the one thing I've noticed with airbrushing, as you know from my videos, I have funny shaped hands, but I can't bend the ends of my fingers. Look, see, they don't bend. They don't do that. I mean, I can bend them. I just can't voluntarily bend them. Uh, and when I'm spraying like this for a long time, it's just kind of uncomfortable. After a little while, my arm gets tired, my hand gets tired. So I figured I'd try a, a trigger grip instead. Uh, might make life a little easier, especially because my spray booth is over there. So I'm leaning over the table to spray and doing this. It's not, it's not, it's not comfortable for me. So I thought we'd give this a go. Um, so it's standard Neo. It just is different in the trigger grip instead of the push down thing. Uh, and it looks rather spanky. Now it does come with, I can't remember if the other Neo did. But first of all, it comes with two cups. And the sizes are that size and that size. That one's gone. See ya. You just don't want to stare at your put, do you? That size and that size. How technical is that? Um, so normal painting, bits of painting. And you've also got this, which technically you can use as a paint reservoir. If you do little touch-ups, then you just put the paint in there, basically. So... I'll do a quick tear down and then we shall have a look at how it works. Where's the camera? Make sure I'm in shot. Yes. Okay. Now I'm sure the camera is freaking the heck out because of all the shiny shiny. So like any other Neo, you have the one thing I do miss on the revolution that has the revolution doesn't have is this bit, which is the trigger lock or the trigger guard or whatever you want to call it. it basically means you can lock how far back the trigger in this case or the the top trigger in a normal airbrush goes so you can control how much paint comes out i can't tell you how much i've missed that from my neo on the revolution it just gives you so much if you know you're doing a light coat and you don't want to go bleep with the paint you can just say right i don't want to go more than that much and it's perfect for controlling how much paint uh what do we have anyway let's get the crown guard off so you've got the crown guard you have the nozzle cap now as with all neos it's got this weird red gunky stuff in there to seal it now that would suggest to me that what i don't want to be doing is dunking this in water to uh, do my cleaning so this may not be going into the uh, ultrasonic doodad the only thing of course then is how do i clean off the nozzle successfully without getting it where that gloop is I guess I'd have to do it with it on here. Uh, you have your trigger, which theoretically is pull back a bit for air, because it's dual action, don't forget. Pull back a little bit for air, and then pull it back further for paint. Now there is like a detent there, you can feel it suddenly stops, and then you push back. There's a bit more resistance here, there's probably a spring in there that stops it there, and then you get the resistance. So that's air, that's paint, that should be fairly simple to control. Psh, air paint doesn't actually make that noise but it'd be cool if it did then on the back we have the usual butt end that comes that stays on there so that's kind of handy you have your needle chuck 
and then you have your needle. This is a 0.35 mil. And there we have it. That's theoretically, that is as much as you need to strip it down to clean it. Unless I somehow got paint back here. This part does come out. You can pull this out all the way. Um, doesn't take the trigger out or anything like that. But I'm not going to do that because then I'll get the sweats and the panic. So that's not something I want to do. But theoretically, if I was cleaning this, and I'm going to be careful taking this off because I don't want to get gunk on my fingers. Uh, if I was cleaning this out, I'd clean the constituent parts. I'd probably clean the crown, the nozzle guard in situ, to be honest. Uh, and then that's all I'd need to do. The nozzle, of course, does come out. I won't take it out now. But you get the little spanner for the nozzle, which is covered in schmutz for some reason. You get the little nozzle, uh, the little spanner for the nozzle. So you can take the nozzle out and give it a darn good clean. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Rather spanky. It's a little bit heavier than the Neo, obviously, because I've just dropped the needle. Uh, obviously, because it's got the, the whole handle on there as well. Just pop that back in. Um, so it's a little more weighty, but not too much, not massively. And it will take a little getting used to. But yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this on the go on the Zaku. I'm just hoping it basically just means I can have less of a hard time because I really do struggle with my airbrushes. Uh, I can't do long stints purely because just the grief my arm gives me. By the way, handy tip, if you whatever airbrush you've got when you're putting the crown cap and the nozzle crack cap on, pull the, tr the needle in. You don't want to ding the end of the needle. So there we have it. So what I'll do, I'll get this back on. Okay, right, here is our envelope. Here is our, uh, the airbrush. Uh, we've just got some basic blue paint in there, some ammo of MIG. Uh, I'm gonna use it neat and see what happens. See how this comes out. <sighs> so, let's give this a try, shall we? Turn on the compressor. Lots of loudness. Now, let's see, I've got the, the re, uh, trigger guard thing here at this end, all the way in, and let's see what happens. That's as far as I can pull the trigger. No paint coming out, because the trigger's locked. So if I pull that back, uh, feel the little resistance and then a bit of paint. Perfect. Bit more paint maybe. Which way is this now? Forgotten which way it turns. So let's put it on some more paint anyway. So just there, I can stop there. I know that's where the air stops. Give it some paint. And I can increase the amount of paint as I go along. So you can see, it's got a nice wide range of paint depths, paint widths, spray widths. And it's spraying this paint no problem. And the good thing is, because it's a trigger, and not like a button, I can really keep a good control of how much paint I'm putting through. I can get, I don't know if you'll see this because I'm going to have to angle it, but I can get really close. Do some really fine lines. Now it's splattering a little bit, but that's because I've got the paint neat. So what I'll probably do in reality normally is put a little bit of thinner in there. just to thin it slightly. But you can see I can get some really fine lines going on there. I've got real great control over how much paint I'm putting on. And I've got nice control over how much paint is coming out and I can keep it perfectly steady. With a button trigger I'm putting on more paint, I'm putting on less paint, I'm putting on varied amounts. This is the same amount of paint all the way through. So this is working really nicely for me. Full whack. No problem. So, I better go and clean this up. But I am really enjoying this. This is the first time I've actually used this. I've just got it out of the box, so I'm really liking 
this brush. It's not doing the close-up stuff too well, but that's because I've not thinned the paint. You can see there, I can get a nice fine line. Perfect. And I hope all that was on camera. So, I'm quite pleased with that. It's given me nice smooth coverage. I've got complete control over the amount of paint because it's more natural for me to hold it and ergonomic like this. Although, after years of playing Xbox, I'm kind of trying to convince myself not to use my middle finger because that's my trigger finger on an Xbox controller. So, yep, yeah, perfect. I can control how much is going through. I can keep it at that level. That's the main thing here. I'm constantly moving the trigger back and forth whether I want to or not. On this thing, I've just locked my hand in place and done. And it is a lot more comfortable. It's not brilliant at where I'm sat now at this angle because the desk is right here and the cable's stuck on it. But when I'm over at my spray booth, when my arm's over there, the spray booth's over there, that'd be really natural. There is one downside. There is one major downside. With the, but I can't, it doesn't, yeah, doesn't fit in your airbrush holder. So I might have to kajiggle that a little bit to get it to work. But yeah, let's go and take this thing, get this thing cleaned up. And we'll come back for a final word. Back in a moment. So there you have it. Uh, the Neo Free Water TRN1. I'm really liking that. Uh, I was a little bit ropey in the spray painting section just because it's the first time I'd used it. And it'll take a little getting used to exactly where to put the trigger to get how much paint. So it'll take me a little while, but I'll get there. But that is going to be absolutely brilliant. And it's going to be perfect for the ammo of MIG paints. And the other reason I forgot to mention that I bought this specific airbrush apart from the fact it's got the trigger is this bit because with ammo of MIG paints you can't just slap the paint on like a Tamiya paint or a Vallejo paint you have to do it in very misty layers and build the colour up otherwise it goes orange peely and horrible and doesn't work so you have to build it up in misty layers and with my revolution it's going to be really easy to go misty layer misty layer pull the trigger back oh I've put too much on now the whole piece is screwed so this means I can set the paint so that I can't put too much paint on unless I sit there and hold it in place for ages, I'm not going to screw it up. And I need to have that control with the with the uh, ammo paints because you have to build them up in mist layers. You can't just slap it on. So that's going to be invaluable. Uh, from that test, um, with this tightened down, so there's less paint coming through, I might need to put a little bit of thinning in. It was thinner even. Still not doing the words thing, am I? It was struggling to come out when I was just putting a little bit of paint on close up as you saw. So yeah, it's a 0.35 mil needle, not a 0.5 and I'm used to the 0.5 now after seven or eight months of using the Revolution. So I might have to put a little bit thinner in the paint just to thin it. The the ammo stuff is is, is fine and thin, but yeah, I'm going to have to add a little bit, I think. But luckily I'm not doing any great fine painting work on the Zaki. It's all going to be major stuff. So yeah, thumbs up from me. Uh, take a little bit of getting used to. I will get comfortable with it after a little bit of use probably be a bit rusty and ropey at start but if you're looking for an airbrush I've often said if you're just starting out and you're looking for an airbrush the Neo is a great sort of starter brush uh, I got my original Neo for about I think 50 quid uh, and it's dead simple dead easy to clean great for beginners you get two cups I think you get two cups with the standard Neo um, not complicated at all and a good starter brush uh, if you're wanting a bit more control over the paint, I think this is going to give you more control, then maybe have a look at one of these. This is more expensive, this is about 100 quid, so it's more expensive, but it's still a great brush, it's still the Neo, and everything good about the Neo. So it's a good beginner brush, and if, like I say, you want more control over the paint, or if you have, say, um, restricted movement in your hands, bear in, I'll say I've got the funky thing on my end of my fingers, and there are other modellers, uh, out there. Um, Will Pattinson is one. His videos are brilliant. Go and watch his videos. They're absolutely fantastic. He has restricted movement in his hands and he finds, he said in his videos, he finds these better for him because he can control this rather than this. So if you do have restricted hand movement or any kind of, um, you know, disability in your hand and maybe fiddling around with the button trigger isn't for you and it's put you off in the past, maybe try out one of these. Give it a try. If you can do that, and you can control how far back you pull it and hold it there, then perfect. If you if you you know have trouble holding heavy weights like that, it's not easy. It's like using a mouse. Using a mouse is natural. I mean, using a mouse is 
not natural on your computer. Using a mouse is uncomfortable. If you use a graphics tablet like I do and you've got a pen, that's a more natural, ergonomically friendly position to have your hand. This is more ergonomically natural. You're like this, not like that. So, yeah, if you have, uh, if you have restricted movement in your hands or any issues like that, give it a trigger brush. There are other ones out there. I think Badger might do some. Iwata do a whole range of them, I think. Uh, I'm sure there are other ones out there, but this is the one I settled on. So give it a try. Or if, you just, if you're going to be doing lots of airbrushing for long periods, give a trigger brush a try. That's going to do it for this time, though. It's just a quick look. I always say quick look, and then it's like, you know, 45 minutes. It's because I don't shut up. It's my problem. Uh, as you can see, this has now got finger marks and paint all over it. Brilliant. <laughs> I've, I've made my mark already. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, stick around for part two of the Zaku build, which I've started filming. Now all the denubbing is done. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I uh, can't think of anything else. But yes, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, visit me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash modelmakingguru. And of course, Twitter, which is at modelmakingguru. Uh, and I shall see you next time for the next video. So until then, whatever that may be, adios amigos.